Hey everyone, Nick Dearbert is here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to talk about extending a basic Python model to add iteration. This is part of our getting started with Python and Excel segment where we've already built out a basic retirement model in both Excel and Python. In the last video, we added iteration to the Excel model. So we are now looking at how we can add this iteration to the Python model. So from uh, you know the, the, the prior video, which went over the basic iteration, we kind of compared the Python iteration to the Excel iteration. Uh, you know, in Python, you're going to use loops. Here, we're looking at a for loop. Um, and in Excel, you are dragging formulas. So ultimately accomplishing the same result. Um, now, the, the Python version is quite a bit more flexible because you can do absolutely anything under that loop. Uh, whatever, whatever operations you want to do, you can do them, whereas Excel, you know, it's just, uh, you know, taking one formula and repeating it. So, um, you know, Excel is maybe a little bit easier to get into for the iteration, but Python ultimately is a lot more flexible and powerful. And we'll see that over time as the course progresses. But let's dig a little bit more into uh, this Python iteration and what all this stuff actually means. Um, so there's a few different parts in here. Uh, the first we kind of you know glossed over this a little bit last time in that uh, we had this first line inputs equals uh, you know left square bracket five comma ten comma fifteen right square bracket uh, so those square brackets there and putting commas in between things this is a new type of object that we hadn't worked with before uh, it's not a string it's not a number this type of object is called a list. Uh, so just by doing those brackets, adding those commas, uh, potentially if there's multiple things in there, uh, you're making a, a list, an object of type list. So this inputs here, we have as an object of type list. And a list is one of the data types in Python which can hold other objects within itself. Um, so here, this list is holding three different numbers, five, 10, and 15. Um, so certainly we're gonna dig a lot more into lists as we go on throughout the course. Um, but for now, you can just know it's an object which holds other objects. Uh, here, we're using it to hold three different numbers. And you can add or remove things from the list, which we're not even going to do in this exercise. Um, but that's the basic idea behind a list. You can hold multiple things, you can add things, you can remove things, and you can look up specific uh, items from the list. Or you can loop through and get each item one by one, as we are doing here. So we've got... You know, these three different numbers as our inputs, 5, 10, 15, and we've stored those into a list. Now we come to the next line, the second line here for item in inputs. So this line is what defines the loop, and this is a for loop. Uh, so we know it's a for loop because the first word there is for, and it has this for in syntax. So it's for, and then uh, whatever we want to call our loop variable, so that could be whatever you want, in, uh, and then whatever you want to iterate through. So we want to iterate through this list of inputs. So it's, you know, for item. Item is ultimately going to become each one of these as we go through. In inputs, that's referring back to this list of three numbers. So then it's important that we end this line with a colon. That's how uh, Python knows that we're going to start a new block here, a block under the for loop, the logic which should execute in each loop, each iteration of the for loop. And then we have the next important thing here is the indentation. You need to have this indentation here for Python to know we want this stuff to run under the for loop. If we had another line of code out here, that would not be under the loop. That would run a single time after the loop has finished. Um, 
so then you know within the loop we're doing two things one is we're doing our calculation here of adding two to whatever our item is either 5 10 or 15 as we go through assigning that to a new variable name new value and then printing out uh, that new value and so that's how we get 7 12 17 because first time it goes through with 5 as item 5 plus 2 is 7 it prints that then 10 comes through as item 10 plus 2 is 12 it prints that then 15 comes through on the last loop 15 plus 2 is 17 and then it would be done with this loop it would go on to any code which is beyond that uh, or finish if that's the last code that you have so that's the basic idea. Let's go ahead and look at uh, how we actually uh, work with this in the context of our existing model. So I have the Python model that we built out uh, in the last exercise here. So we already have, uh, you know, getting the years to retirement uh, for Martha based on this single uh, investment rate of 5% here. So now we want to look at multiple uh, interest rates. Um, and for that, let's say we want to look at uh, uh, four or five, or let's say five, six, and 7%. So we can say, you know, investment rates equals and then brackets and the brackets is how we're going to have a list here um, so then we can do five percent six percent seven percent and you'll notice i'm putting commas uh, in between each of the items the spaces are optional they just look nice and people normally do them um, the important thing is that you have the commas to separate the items in the list so then you know we can look at our investment rates uh, and you can see that we indeed get back that same list of these three numbers. And so then that takes us to the for loop next. Um, so we can say, you know, for I rate in investment rates, let's just print out that um, investment rate. This is, you know, pretty much the simplest loop that you could have. So we can see it prints five and then it prints six, and then it prints seven. And you know, if we had some code out here, uh, then that's going to run once at the end of the loop after it's done. Uh, if we put that into the loop, then it's going to run once per loop. So that's you know where the importance of this indentation comes in. Anything which is indented is going to run as part of the loop, so it's going to run over and over for as many inputs as you have. That's why we have three dones here. We move it back and we're back to one done because it does this print line three times and then this is not indented so then it does this after it has finished the for loop and if you tried to have no indent at all it's going to give you an indentation error expected an indented block and that's because you know anytime you're doing a colon like this in python it's expecting you to start a new indented block um, and so we need to have that for it to be valid Python. So that's the basic uh, way to loop through these uh, investment rates. So now let's bring in the actual calculation that we wanna do. Um, so we have our calculation here from before, um, but we don't wanna use the single investment rate uh, from before, we wanna use this I rate which is you know each uh, investment rate. So I run that and then you don't see any output, right? Because again, we have to actually tell Python that we wanna see what we calculated. It is doing the calculations, but it just doesn't show them by default. So we're gonna bring this print statement also into that loop. And now you can see that we get the three different uh, years to retirement here but uh, it's you know not uh, quite there yet because it's not clear which years to retirement goes with which interest rate. So let's include that into the message as well. So if she earns a uh, I rate and then put the number formatting, we'll go over more of what all this number formatting need 
means when we get into the Python basics. Um, but now we can see that that's included in the string as well. So now we have, you know, same thing that we had in Excel. Uh, now we're using a loop. We have the same code, uh, which, which executes for all three iterations. Um, and we see the results for each one. And again, that uh, indentation is important. If we just put the print here, it's only going to show us the last one because it finishes the loop and then it has everything set up from the last loop. Uh, so make sure to pay a lot of attention to that indentation uh, so that everything that you're executing as a part of the loop is indented and everything which you aren't is not. So, uh, you know, that's the uh, way we can add iteration to our Python models and functions. We're going to come back um, next time to discuss the lab exercise for this material. So thanks for listening and see you next time.